Hello, internets. I'm here to talk about masks. Most of you guys just know me as a turbine guy, but I've been doing some work around respiratory protection for a while, and uh, I see there's a lot of misunderstandings about masks and what they're for and how they work. And uh, so I thought I'd share some insights as well as a new project that I'm working on, which you do-it-yourselfers out there also might be interested in. So first to talk about the standard mask, the thing to remember about these is they might protect you, but they don't protect anybody else. As long as I've got this exhale valve, all you're doing is breathing out whatever you want and nobody's protected. So these kind of masks are really only for first responders and people in the healthcare system uh, or people who are at risk. But if you think you're ill, wearing one of these is irresponsible. The, the reality is you're protecting the air that's coming in, but you're not protecting anybody else because you're just venting it to the outside. Same with this. If you're sick and you wear this, just blowing out whatever viral load you've got. So if you're at all sick, stay home. If you have to go out, you wear the surgical type mask that protects people outside. That's why you see people in Asia all wearing the surgical mask because it's two way protecting other people as well as protecting you. So a big problem is that a lot of people can't wear a conventional mask or they can't wear them for the hours that they need to. And so in industry for a long time, there have been these systems where you essentially use a battery powered fan and that fan is usually hooked on a belt or something like that. And there's a tube that blows air, usually into some kind of mask. So air is coming over the top of your head usually and down the front of your face so it's nice and cool. And the whole thing usually has a hood and a sort of an apron to go around your shoulders. So air leaks out around your shoulders, but no air really leaks in because there's positive pressure. The fan is blowing air in all the time. These are really great systems. They are used all the time and they last a long time. The problem is they seem to start around a thousand to two thousand bucks and they look to have less than a hundred dollars worth of parts. So what can you do? So I've never afforded one uh, and I've always wanted one. And so I started thinking about this before this coronavirus thing and this is what I've come up with. So this essentially standard computer fan. It's not ideal. I'll talk more about that. 3D printed enclosure. Uh, the plans or the link for this is uh, will be in the description. Um, and so essentially 12 volts to here and jetting out of here you have a nice stream of clean air. So you, I'll jack a hose into this. I'll have that hose go to the helmet and I'll have a, a fabric uh, hood around it. And then um, essentially, you can't touch your face. Everything stays inside the hood, uh, except what leaks out around the shoulders, which is going to get caught in your clothes. It's not going to be some high velocity stream, like a sneeze or a vent from one of these going out at the people around you. It's going to be this slow leakage through your clothes around your shoulders. So people are, are more protected and you're protected. And not only that, you don't have anything heavy on your face. People can see your face. And so if you have to communicate with people like you're a first responder, uh, or maybe you're working in a store where there's more risk, um, as long as you keep your face shield clean, something I have a problem with, but a lot of people don't, um, then people can see you, you can see people, you can communicate quite clearly through here, people can hear you quite easily. Uh, and so I think it's a good solution. I'll just take it apart so you can see this one right now. It's just my first mock-up, and so I've sealed it up with tape. Yeah. So you can see inside, that's all it is, right? It's these two filters. In this case, these are a screw-on type. They're more commonly, they're a, a, a twist lock fixture, but uh, this allows you to see inside. So there's a second one of these um, on the back, and uh, and so air is blown in by the fan, it's trapped in this chamber, and is forced 
through these filters and out through here. So you can jack whatever hose you want in there and away you go. The other way you can use this is you can just set it down in a room and it'll just run and it will suck air uh, uh, out of the room through the filter, slowly keep doing that. So if you have a car, you want to put it in your car, you're maybe traveling with passengers, um, you want to have a cleaner environment, uh, one of these. The second thing I'm going to talk about is that when people get pneumonia, which is uh, the outcome for a lot of people with uh, coronavirus, um, one of the first things that happens is their ability to absorb oxygen is impaired. And uh, eventually that can lead to them having to be on a respirator, but usually long before that happens, they are put on supplemental oxygen and that does it for a lot of people. Um, uh, many people, that's all they'll need. Um, and so oxygen therapy has been around for a long time and in the hospital or in the, the medical system uh, it's usually provided by a little box called a pressure swing absorption system and these are really cool gadgets that work great, they're very efficient, uh, they're not really do-it-yourself though and I was thinking about it and I've been thinking for a long time that I'd like an oxyhydrogen torch and I wondered can I put some of my electrolysis research towards uh, making an oxygen generator that people might be able to improvise for their own uh, uh, assisted oxygen? And as I looked into it, it became clear that it, there's some tricks uh, and it's not easy, but it's possible. Um, the, the first try that I made is this system here. Uh, and this is what you would call an HHO system. So this generates a mixed gas of hydrogen and oxygen. This bottle is for the electrolyte reserve. Uh, and then this would be a, a storage tank um, with a, uh, a water lock so that um, there's no flashback to the generator. But anyway, we'll get to that another time. So this system essentially uses a series of alternating negative and positively charged plates. Um, and and that breaks the hydrogen oxygen bonds uh, and so you end up with this mixed gas of hydrogen oxygen um, and so not ideal uh, you can light it on fire you can use it to run a torch um, but most people aren't looking to breathe a mixed gas they just want the oxygen um, and so this is the kind of cell that I've used it's just based on a stainless steel washer uh, and what I've done is uh, uh, soldered a wire to the edge of the washer uh, and then the whole thing is bedded in, in epoxy uh, and you can see these tubes right here which allow the bubbles produced in the electrolyte to flow upward. The bubbles are light so they're going to rise and so this is a bubble pump powered electrolyte system. So gas is generated at these plates, goes up into this manifold, into here, bubbles into here. This should be full of electrolytes so that you know your system is wet um, and then uh, your oxygen gas is, is produced out of here. Uh, sorry, your mixed gas is produced out of here. Um, thankfully I was um, um, approached by a guy on the internet who saw what I was doing and had some really great suggestions. Thanks Keith. Um, uh, makes an enormous difference. And so what I've learned is that it is quite reasonable to generate separated gases. There are some tricks to doing it and you can do it without a, uh, a proton, sorry, you can do it without a proton exchange membrane. Um, in fact, there's a, a guy on the internet who I will link to who shows how to use uh, nylon fabric instead of a, um, a, a fancy membrane. And while this may not be quite as efficient as the big commercial systems, very inexpensive and uh, uh, commonly available. So my goal originally was just to be able to have a mixed gas oxyhydrogen torch, uh, but uh, there are other places where it might be more useful just to have an oxygen system. Uh, in a case like that, you still have to do something with the hydrogen. I'd probably make a little combustor just to burn it so that it's not building up somewhere and causing trouble, uh, but um, uh, not a big deal and, uh, and could be worthwhile. So I'm going to Put most of this information out there on the internet and uh, I'd love to see other people working on it. The reality I see is we've got a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there with amazing resources 
We've got uh, um, local fab labs who, who at this point, I think, are trying to figure out what they can do to help. And the reality is there are quite a few things we could do to help. The, the system is pretty overwhelmed and a little bit of local manufacturing, even if it's just to make screw threads for these cartridges so that people can sew them into their own masks and use a good quality cartridge in a nice waterproof mask. Um, and, and in that case, with no exhale valve, so you're breathing out and in through this thing, which means you're protecting people around you as well as yourself. Um, so I'll be posting more of this stuff online. Uh, I'll post a, a link to the step and um, original fusion file for this. Um, I hope that uh, you will be gentle, uh, those of you who look at the fusion file, because it will show that my drafting process is not exactly linear and, uh, and not as organized as I would like. I said I'd give a few more details on some of the things going on here. So something to keep in mind is that these fans, what I've started with, they're axial flow fans, so that air flows along the axis of rotation, and they're not great at pushing through a filter. They're great at moving lots of air, but not against resistance like a filter. So I'm gonna to switch to a different kind of fan, which is the radial flow fans, and so here, the air flows radially. The blades shoot the air out to the side instead of flowing along its axis. And these kinds of fans are much better at pushing through a filter. So if you're going to experiment around this yourself, look for this kind of fan. Um, I'm going to work at 3D printing one uh, to see if I can get the, the size that I want. This motor... It has two wires. Two wire motors, like this, you can get them in lots of places, cordless drills, stuff like that. They're not ideal because they're not quite as efficient as the three wire motors. So this is what's known as a brushed motor. And this, see the three wires, this is an RC motor and it's a brushless motor. So it doesn't have as much wear and tear as the brush motors. They're a bit more efficient and they're very controllable. So here's this brushed motor. Here's the controller. So this is called an electronic speed controller. And they're used in RC drones and, and all kinds of things like that. Um, and so they essentially run the motor and they allow you to run it with variable speed. I want to throw in another detail about these speed controllers. They come in lots of colors and lots of different uh, uh, form factors, but mostly they're a little flat shrink wrap package like this. One of the big advantages of using a speed controller is that many speed controllers have built-in battery protection. And so the speed controller, if your battery starts to run down, the speed controller will slow down the motor and eventually shut the motor down before you overdraw the battery. These fancy batteries can be dangerous if they're drawn too flat, if too much power is pulled out of them, they can actually catch fire. And so by using a speed controller, that's configured right. There's a few little things you have to read in the instructions to make sure it matches the battery right. But then the speed controller will be measuring the battery and keeping you from overdrawing the battery flat. So that's one of the advantages of using an ESC. This little thing is what's telling the ESC how fast to go. This little thing's called a servo tester. You can get them for about five bucks but they're not necessarily the best way to do this. They're just a, a, um, a quick expedient measure. So instead of the ESC, an alternative is a microcontroller. This is a big one, an Arduino, but they come quite small. Same power, way smaller form factor. And that will still allow you to use a dial to turn the speed of the fan up and down but it'll also be able to allow you to attach some sensors. So 
if the filters are getting plugged and it's having trouble blowing through them, uh, it can give you a warning. Um, I might use it to control an LED. So you'd have a flashlight if you want it. Um, by using a microcontroller instead of a, um, a servo tester, you get a lot more possible functionality and really it doesn't cost you much more. These microcontrollers you can get for uh, uh, the big fancy ones for $30, uh, tiny little ones that will do everything we need for 10 to 15, sometimes even less. So Arduino uh, is a better way of going to the next stage. Uh, I'm just trying to give everybody the whole range of options. So the last thing I want to cover isn't really about this, but it kind of is about this. Uh, this is going to be a difficult time. The economy is taking quite a beating, and it's probably never going to be exactly the same. And people are worried about a depression. One of the things that's really different is that we have all this stuff around. We have all this knowledge. We have maker spaces and fab labs and, and experts on the internet, YouTube, who you can reach out to and they actually they know a lot of stuff. And so we're never going to have another depression because back then they didn't have anything to really start with. We've got tons of stuff sitting around that often looks like junk, but with a little bit of work you can turn it into stuff that could make a difference. And so, you know, in this difficult time, look around. Uh, you've probably got some old printers sitting around, all that kind of stuff. Uh, take some junk apart, sort it out. Don't let it turn into a big mess. But uh, remember, these aren't just junk. They're the resources here. Remember, the most important resource is in here. If you've got time, learn some more stuff. Pack it in there. There's room. You can only watch so much TV. Thanks very much. Uh, live long and prosper. Subscribe. And remember to hit the notifications bell if you want to get alerted to the new videos as soon as they come out.